everybody. Today we're going to be talking about using descriptive language in your writing and how you can make yourself a better writer and a clearer communicator by using vivid telling details, precise words and phrases, and a variety of different descriptors to make your writing as clear as possible for your audience. So for this lesson, you are going to need some paper and some colored pencils or markers. So go ahead and get those and join me on the next slide. So our essential question for today is what is the value of specificity and detail in written communication? So think about how is it that we communicate? We communicate a lot of things non-verbally with our expressions, but we also communicate using our words. Sometimes we use those words verbally in conversation, but other times we use our words in writing. So the purpose of communication is always to convey what's inside of my head and get it into yours or vice versa. You're sharing with an audience. So why is communication important? Because it's the way that we can get ideas transferred between people and between societies and across time and across space. So really specific detail in that written communication is your legacy of, of sharing your ideas and making sure that everybody understands you very clearly. So in order to demonstrate the importance of this, you're going to create a monster. So go ahead and take 10 minutes and draw any monster you want. Make it as colorful and creative as possible. You don't have to be a beautiful artist. Just make sure you get something down on your paper. You can pause the video now and then join me on the next slide. So I'm going to give you an example. I have drawn a monster. He's mostly green, his body is round, and he has big eyes. So on the back of your paper, draw my monster for me. Take just a couple of minutes and join me on the next slide. So meet my monster. As you can see, he's mostly green, his body is round, and he has big eyes. So. How closely does the image that you drew resemble my actual monster? Does it look exactly like him? Most likely not, right? What was missing from my description that would have helped you to replicate my monster more exactly? Think about all of the details that are different between your monster and my monster and take a minute to reflect on them. So how about trying a better description? My monster is a light, grassy green. His body is round and furry, and there are slightly lighter colored freckles on his forehead and chin. He has three big round purple eyes that sparkle in the light, and he has a smiling mouth with a long red tongue hanging out. He has only a top row of teeth visible, and they're evenly spaced and square. His legs are orange and stick-like, and he appears happy and goofy in attitude and has two blue striped horns protruding from the top of his head. So why is this description so much better than the first one? You remember the first one was really short, really vague. There was not a lot of information. This one has details. This description is full of specific imagery and it's full of adjectives. So when we're talking about images, we're talking about color, we're talking about shape, we're talking about taking these things that we see with our eyes and putting them into words. We also are using very specific adjectives and descriptors. So you wanna make sure that as you're writing, you're giving as much detail as possible. This applies in all kinds of writing, not just creative writing. When you're describing your ideas academically, you want to use specific images and details from the text that you're referencing. And just like when you're writing creatively, you want to use specific images and details from the image in your head to get them to your reader. So revisiting our essential question, what is the value of specificity in detail in written communication? So think about the difference in my communication about my monster's appearance between my first description and the second description. What was the main difference? That main difference was detail, imagery, vividness of my adjectives and descriptors, and also length. So what does this lesson demonstrate about the value of specific details in communication? Hopefully it's shown you that you have a responsibility to your reader to make sure that you're making your ideas very clear and that you're thoughtfully expressing them. This is what all of the writing standards are targeting. So when you're writing, whether it's creatively or academically, you need to make sure that you're using those specific details in your communication. So to wrap up, go ahead and look at the monster that you drew at the beginning of the lesson. Write me a strong and clear description of your monster. Try to use 